There is one more spot up for grabs here in the north. Right now, St. Louis, they won yesterday. They're waiting for the decision of this game. Seattle needs to win first. And on the tiebreaker, if they do win, if they score at least 34 points, keep Vegas under that number, they will get in. If that doesn't happen, things get a whole lot more complicated. What's up, everybody? Welcome back inside the booth. Tom Lugamill, I'm John Triffin. Guys, we love the enthusiasm on Twitter, but we got you. We know. We know what's going on with the tiebreaker. Relax a little bit. Relax. If the magic number of 34 doesn't happen, things get a little more complicated. Sure. Let's go through all the other scenarios that could yeah. happen. We're at tiebreaker scenario number four. If the magic number 34 doesn't happen, we advance to tiebreaker number five. Correct. And we're fully aware that Seattle can win this game, not meet that 34 magic number parameter, whether it be points scored or holding Vegas under 34, and still qualify for the playoffs. It just goes to a much more complicated mathematical equation. And that we will certainly get into if the game presents itself down the stretch in the fourth quarter. Right now, Seattle looking for the first points of the ball game. Two minutes to play in his first half. Setting up the screen to Gordon. Can't spin away from defenders. A short gain on first down. Picked up two. CJ Avery with the ankle stuck with the ankle tackle. Okay, we got spread right, oh, F no. mid, 881, X fade, Y over, F true, Z9. Y over, F true, Z9. Z9 is going to be your go fade. route. Set, go! Hard, hard. Second and eight, Danucci scanning. Now a step up, open field up the middle. Danucci, he's in there. Dragon strike first. See Ben Denucci here. You got a simple four man rush, and he just splits the gap right there between the center and the guard. Sees the front door open and take what the defense gives you. You're playing man cover, you got your back towards the quarterback if you're a Vegas defender. Ben Denucci knows it, and that's part of the read. He's got a progression here, here to here. Wait a minute. If I can run, 51 on two. That's my last progression. 51. How about the offensive line opening up the hole for Danucci there? Yeah. Michael Menick, Jared Thomas, those two guys. Set, go! Left guard in the center. Hot, hot. Seattle will go for two. Fade, end zone, incomplete. Jordan BC couldn't come down with it. See the arm strength there. He can really drive the football. This is what they're playing for. Arlington and Houston, that game is already set for Saturday, 7 Eastern on ESPN2. DC is awaiting the winner. Will it be Seattle or will it be St. Louis? Let's go, let's go! Third and four, 35 seconds of play and a half. McClendon taking off with his feet. Does not get there. Picks up two. It'll bring up fourth down. Nico Lelos out of Dartmouth. That's right, the Ivy Leaguer with the stop. 25 seconds, 25 seconds. Timeout, Seattle. Clock's at 25. Second charge timeout, Seattle. 30 seconds in length. Please reset the game clock to 25 seconds. I Thank spoke you. to Nico before the game. Being a Dartmouth alum, I had to yep. show him some love. Hey. He said, coming from a small school, hey. I love having an opportunity like yep. this. He played with the Giants at a, at a part-time, at a few games with the Giants, but he said, this is an opportunity. I get 60 snaps a game to continue to work, keep my dream alive, work on my craft. He goes, this has been incredible. 60 snaps a game of live professional football to be evaluated. You're not going to get that in 10 snaps over four NFL preseason games, right? And it, it's just the perfect storm for future opportunities based off of on-field production. And that's that's what this is all about. It's, it's on-field tape. And what the XFL does is that it shows you, you can go any path you want. There's not one path to get to the NFL. Arizosa with the punt. McKnight will let it bounce in front of him. It'll go out of bounds. 15 seconds to play in this half. Seattle, they do have one timeout to work with. Hey! 
Hey, hey! Hey! That ball loads just 30. Okay, you, you, oh, can, oh. you throw a flag? It's, 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 not a, it's not a flag, but we're, they're in our ear. We're, we're, we're okay. How come you don't throw a flag? No, that's only kick off. The kick was out of bounds. The ball kick off. at the 35 yard line. First down. 15 seconds. So 15 seconds, Seattle with the ball on their own 35. Jim Hazlitt wanting that kickoff rule to apply to the punt game. It only applies when it goes into the end zone on the punt. Set, go! First and 10, with one timeout, Seattle. And Danucci hit as he threw it. That was Roberts applying the pressure. Nine seconds to play in this half. Big Ben, Z stop. Pick the Z stop and get out of bounds. Set, go! Second and ten. Danucci to the sideline, completes it, out of bounds is BC. Two seconds to play in the half. Picked up 22. Watch Ben Danucci, I was calling him a riverboat gambler. I just love the way he releases the ball. Fling! Right out there to the sideline. Please reset the game clock to three seconds. And, and put them in a position seconds, to get a ball into the end zone here. They're actually going to Go ahead and attempt a field goal. That was actually the longest play of the game so far today. 22 yard pickup. Second charge timeout. Vegas. 30 seconds. So Vegas will call a timeout as Dominic Eberly, the kicker for Seattle, will come on and try to add three <laughs> more points before the half. He's going to have to have an absolute missile tied to his foot. Has made the 54 yarder there. Jim Hazlitt obviously believes in it. XFL long this season yard. is 59. This would set a new season long. This is a 61 yard attempt. Dominic Everly have enough leg. Puts a foot into it on the way. It is no good. So Seattle needing a win to get into the playoffs. They lead it 6 0 at the half. Sorry. Yep. So a low scoring game, the over 47 and a half. We may not even come anywhere near that thing right now. Watch party going on right now. <laughs> St. Louis is definitely happy about it because with all the playoff tiebreaker scenarios in play, they know Seattle has to win. Seattle has to win in order for them to get in, but they've got to start putting up some points in order to separate them from St. Louis to get that final spot. Yeah, when, when the math is all said and done, there's no doubt that the second half is going to be critical here uh, for Seattle when it, when it comes to points as we were taking a, a, a look at the the live look in of the watch party there in St. Louis with a nervous grin on the face of head coach Anthony Beck. Well, the important thing for Seattle to know is that coming out of the locker room, they will get the ball first yep. in the second half. What did you learn from that last drive there from, C um, from Seattle getting in the end zone for Danucci before they attempted that long field goal? Well, obviously they were able to actually have some red zone efficiency. That's critical. We've seen Seattle drive the ball up and down the field uh, throughout the evening tonight. Their inability to run the football, I think, has put a little pressure 
on the quarterback and Ben Nucci. We've seen him take some shots. All right, if they can get some run game going, I think that's going to open up some downfield throws for this Seattle offense uh, in the second half. Their tight end's got their longest run of the day. Two rushes in the first half. That rush was for nine yards. Get a little more balance, then things I think will really open up on the, in the passing game on the outside. All right, let's take a look at the progressive first half stats. And Tom, let me know, what stands out for you right now? Well, neither team's been very efficient there on third down, but most importantly, neither team's turned the ball over. And that's really critical for, for Seattle because that was a huge issue for them in the first few weeks of the season. Now, they've still been prone to turnovers, but they've played much better football and they've lessened those errors. And they're continuing that trend here. But you... You look at Vegas, zero pass yards in the first half. Got to try and see if they can get something going there in the pass game. This is this is going to be a very, very interesting second half because we're now at the point, unless there's just this massive explosion, we're at the point where Seattle's just going to have to be happy potentially getting a win. Whatever that score is and whatever tiebreaker that you have to get to, win the game and then let everything else figure it out. Dude, they trying to score points, I'm trying to score the same amount. One, one more than them, I'm trying to score. That's a great job taking that guy all the way back. When you coming out, cutting out to be in the nickel or be in the corner, make sure you can see him, yeah. right? If he's a, especially the single receiver side. So if you can go in here and you can just, you can basketball him or make sure you undercut it. Yeah. Right? It's the same thing as you were already out there at corner. Let's go, we need a touchdown. Let's go guys. saw Danucci there with the only score in that first half for Seattle. With this low scoring game, that means might not hit that magic number of 34. We will tell you how to get to the fifth tiebreaker scenario after this kick. Sam Sloman kicking off. Kelvin McKnight. Oh, he is body slammed to the turf. So if this score holds with Seattle winning six to nothing, we go to a fifth tiebreaker scenario for the final playoff spot. You combine the ranks of all of the teams in the XFL, and if this score holds, that means Seattle would move on to the playoffs. Yeah, certainly would. You see that number to the far right right there. And then again, it's the lowest ranking wins the tiebreaker. So if you're on to the fifth tiebreaker now, and we assume that magic number of 34 is not met here tonight, we'll be going back to that play. First and ten for Seattle. That's Philip Lindsay, a former Bronco. And I spoke to Lindsay before the game, and I asked him about this. He said he got the call three weeks ago, and he said he's been training, he's been working for this, and he Here said, "Why not? Of course, I wanted to play in the XFL." He goes, "That's the best way to get into game shape. I want to prove to everybody I'm healthy, I'm still explosive. Yep. I want another shot at the NFL." Well, and there's no doubt he's explosive. When he gets the ball in space, he can make people miss. He's a natural jump cut type of back, and again, another opportunity. Better than sitting on your sofa, right? Second and 12, setting up the screen. That's Jacor Pearson. And Pearson will be thrown out of bounds after picking up three. C.J. Avery was there. Biggest ball, yep. Oh. By rule, the runner fumbled the ball at the one-yard line. Will be brought back to the spot of the one. First down, Vegas. See, what had happened was... <laughs> Mikhail Wright, the chase down from behind. It still is the longest play of the season for Vegas at 84 yards, but they don't get to cap it off. Kale Wright was rolling. By rule, four time fumble. Rules apply under two minutes. The ball be brought back to the spot of the fumble. First down, Vegas at the one yard line. Harry, as a receiver, do you have to get on your guy if something like that happens? What do you do coming off of a play like that? I'm sitting him down and he's never going in the game again. <laughs> Inexcusable, showboating, tuck the ball away, go in the end zone. Simple as that, fellas. 
All right, let's go to the command center. Dean Blandino, can you explain the rule, how that play unfolded at the end? So this is different from the NFL in college. This is the rule when you fumble it into your opponent's end zone and it goes out of bounds. Normally that's a touchback. We change that. We change that. Now the offense will retain possession when they fumble it into their opponent's end zone and it goes out of bounds. It's treated just like a fumble forward out of bounds in the field of play. So Vegas will maintain possession, but it won't be a score. It will go to the one yard line. So what, what was the line of thinking in making that shift? What did you think? made that a better option for the XFL? Well, we wanted to try it as we think about our rules innovations. That was something our fans were telling us. They didn't like the rule that it was a touchback if the defense didn't recover. And Got we it. felt like we wanted to listen to our fans, make that change. This is the first time it's happened all year. Wow. We like that. Getting the fans involved. Dean, thank you so much for that explanation. So it'll be first and goal from the one for Vegas. McKenzie with the carry, and he does get in the end zone. Touchdown, Vipers. Shy McKenzie with a one-yard touchdown rush. Vegas, their first touchdown of the ball game. Simple, easy handoff inside here. So Vegas will elect to go for two. We don't pick extra points in the XFL. Two-point conversion try from the five-yard line. Sexton, the man in motion for Vegas. Clendon rolling out. Chase down by Lelos. Incomplete. Was looking for Sexton. And at the end of that play, there was hey, somebody hey, on that hey, sideline. Hey. The players are making sure that they're okay. As McClendon was bearing down. Yeah, I didn't see how it happened at the end, but I sure hope that person's okay on the sideline. Two-point conversion is no good. 28 to nine, Seattle now on top. Was it open up? A quick strike for Vegas, just three plays. They went 85 yards in under a minute. Yeah, did you see the shit they did today, Carl Buckley? I mean, he, there, fuck. Same team. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Anyway, if you want more explanation of the I got it. You know what? I got it now. Because it cast for uh, 19, oh. not yet. Yes. Yeah. I haven't seen it since. I don't remember seeing it. I, 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 I know. <laughs> well, I was playing. That's why, you know. Wanted access. <laughs> Jim Hamlet has it having a good time with the officials today. The well, fans have spoken. That's what we're giving you. 130 to play here in the fourth. And a penalty flag at the end of this one. Holding, receiving team number nine. Is your spot good? Spot is good. We're gonna go from the end of the play then. Okay. It's behind. Holding. Return team number nine. Ten yard penalty. First down. Seattle. Let's go. A minute twenty-five. Come on. First down. In case you're wondering, even with that score by Vegas there. Nothing. Seattle is still right, in off. prime position to Denver win the Denver fifth tiebreaker as things stand right now. Other side, other side, other side. If you're Seattle, go. all you gotta do is take care of the ball. Hot, hot. They go on the ground with Philip Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay brought down at the 21, again a four. <laughs> Seattle, 
Running out the clock, Philip Lindsay picks up the first down and that'll do it. A gain of 11. Vegas not stopping the clock. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, most, yeah. No. Strong left, strong left. Tampa on two, ready. Tampa. Man, we got all types of ones out now. here. You might have to uh, your pick and what you want to get home. Here. Warm dragon hats. Hi, hi. Fans are chanting, we want DC. We want DC. Well, you get your wish. Seattle with a 28 to 9 win, taking care of business, and the Sea Dragons advance to the playoffs in the XFL. And the fans just heard it over the announcement here in the stadium. With the win, they have tied St. Louis for a 7-3 record, but off the fifth tiebreaker, they win it and will advance over St. Louis. The league could not ask for anything more. To go into the final week of the season and have all four games have playoff implications, you couldn't have scripted it any better. Seattle fans want a DC and you will get it. The defenders will take on the Sea Dragons next Sunday at 3 Eastern on ESPN. That game is gonna be something special. Let's send it down to Jim Hazlitt with Stormy. Coach Hazlitt, I know it wasn't the prettiest the last couple of minutes, but that doesn't matter. Your team is in the playoffs. What changed at halftime for you guys to get this win? Well, you know, I thought the defense was outstanding the whole day. I mean, they were into it and playing well, and uh, we struggled early on offense, and then we kind of got in a rhythm, and um, we scored three straight touchdowns, and, and then they, you know, it was all clicking. It's a good football team. They're really good players. They, they really are, and they work hard. We push the limit. We push them to the limit, and um, I think they like it. So it's uh, it's fun being around them. Hopefully, we can uh, continue to do what we're doing. You guys had a lot of different motivation coming into this game, including playing with heavy hearts, losing one of your own in Chris Smith. I know how much you and these players wanted to win for him. Yeah, um, you know I'm going to talk. To, uh, Chris into playing so uh, and I, I love Chris I met his mother and father this week I know why he's such a great guy because his mother and dad were outstanding and they um, they're great people so uh, um, surely going to be missed he, he's a great guy he was a great guy absolutely now on to DC coach Hazlitt uh, a team that you had trouble with in the regular season, but that uh, what you say trouble. We lost by one on, a, on the last play of the game, and then we went for two to win it, and we didn't make it. So it'll be a good game. Well, that's what, I was gonna say, how excited are you for another shot? Yeah, I think it's gonna be a good game. To, uh, it's gonna be a good game. People are gonna want to watch it. It'd be better in a championship game. <laughs> Thanks, <God. laughs> Thank you. The memory of Chris Smith, 31-year-old defensive end who passed away last week on Monday. What a way to honor your fallen teammate with a big win here today. Well, again, you come out, you do what you can do. You, you worry about what you can control. And I think they, they used the week, turned it into something positive. Again, a locker room, football team's like a family. And they lost a family member. And you see a very disappointed member of the St. Louis Battlehawks right there and A.J. McCarron looking up at that screen one last time as a playoff first looks away. What a season here in the XFL. We have finished the regular season and the playoffs are set. Arlington will take on Houston. Seattle will take on D.C. Fans, thank you. It's been incredible. For my crew, Tom Luganville, Harry Douglas, Stormy Bond and Tony. Aaron Owens producing. Johnny Hanna directing. I am John Schriffen saying thank you for joining us from Seattle. Danucci and Sea Dragons will move on to the playoffs.